So this is the question. It's a relatively simple question dealing with the thermal expansion. I want you to do it this once because I kind of quite purposefully I don't lecture on uh, thermal expansion. And uh, this is the one question in your problem set that you might get. So uh, let me just cover it because you might get it in your problem set assessment and you don't have a choice of doing a different question. So it asks, how much taller does the Eiffel Tower become at the end of a day when the temperature has increased by uh, 13 degrees C. And notice the question isn't giving you your starting temperature. It's because it doesn't need to. Uh, when you, so the description of the thermal expansion, which talks about this uh, change of length, it's uh, proportional to the original length of the thing. Um, and it's, uh, it, to make this proportionality into equality, it's uh, it, one of the factors it involves is change of temperature. So all you need is change, which the question has given you. And uh, if you simply have meters times degrees C, that doesn't give you uh, meters back. So what you need is a, a coefficient of that proportionality. And this is what we call coefficient of linear expansion, indicated by letter alpha. And, uh, and that's what you need to do. You are given the original height, L, and it says you can uh, assume it's made of steel. So this information will help me look up what coefficient of expansion we have. And this is one of those things that I will never, I refuse to have memorized. So I'll have to just look it up. Um, it's in your textbook. You have section on thermal expansion. There should be like a table there. Hopefully one of the materials listed in the table is steel. So um, we can just write it down. Uh, iron ore steel, okay, 12 times 10 to the power minus six, and always make sure you have correct unit, okay. 12 times 10 to the minus six, uh, inverse degrees C, or whatever. <laughs> With the degrees C, the units are a little bit weird. Uh, let me not get too much. So I think I can just plug in the numbers. Um, so I'll find that. Um, uh, let me just uh, put in the numbers to make sure that the units come out right. Times the length, 321 meters, times the change of temperature, 13 degrees C. Yeah. Okay, the units do come out right. These cancel, and I have meters left, uh, which I will convert to centimeter for the final answer. So let me just do the calculation, and uh, we're done. Um, so 12, um, I know this calculator well enough uh, that I know that to do this power of 10 um, thing, I do, I think it's this one, <laughs> e-notation. Uh, so this means 12 times 10 to the power of minus six, that number, times 321 times 13. It's equal to this many meters. To convert it to centimeters, I can multiply that by 100. Um, so five centimeters. Oh, I suspected that's how the question was generated. That uh, somehow question generated five centimeter first and then worked backward to this, I think. So that's thermal expansion. So one of those topics where um, in your work as an engineer or if you go into science research and you're an experimentalist, it's the kind of thing that you need to be aware of and account for in real world practical work. Um, and theoretically, unless you're doing solid state physics research, I think uh, theoretically it's uninteresting. And at least as far as the topics covered in this class goes, um, you can kind of get by without dealing with the thermal expansion, especially uh, when it comes to the details of analysis of heat engines, because uh, we mostly deal with the gas systems where all, all of this is not relevant. <laughs> but, but it is a practical effect that you need to be aware of and you need to know when it could uh, affect your results. And, it's something that you have to design for. So, 